Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it on shaky ground because that's the where that's exactly where I think this counter trend rally is on shaky ground. And we're going to talk about why we're going to focus on the S&P 500 uh, today. We're going to take a look at the daily and weekly charts. Look at the Elliott Wave picture. Check in on the McClellan oscillators and a, another one of my indicators and look at uh, the XLF, the financial ETF. All right, on Friday, the S&P 500 was up 38.94. Uh, so a little bit of a move to the upside here. Did not take out Thursday's high. I still think this is a little counter trendish. We'll get into that in a minute. Here's what it did for the week, down 37.82. A little bit of a doji candle in here. It closed right about or very close to where it opened for the week. So that is the picture on the SPX. Let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture. Okay, so we've got a few things on the chart here. Um, first of all, the dotted line, let me get this up like this. The dotted line is the low of minor wave one down. So that's sometimes a target when I get a, a zigzag pullback like this. Well, we've pulled a little bit above that. Okay, so the other thing, a couple of things we look at is the retracement in here. I don't know why it keeps doing that. The uh, percent retracement of two versus one. And it's here's the 50 level and the 61.8% Fibonacci relationships. Okay. And we've pulled above the 50%. We're right in here. We're actually at 57.2% retracement, 18 days to the high. Okay. And, uh, and it, you can see the data down here. The entire move was 23 days down 35.4% intraday high to intraday low. So now the other thing I've got on the chart here is comparing the C, wave C, versus wave A as a part of this zigzag. And one of the targets you usually have on that, the first target anyway, is where does C equal A, 100%. So 2893, let's round it, 2893. We're just shy of that at the high. The high was 2879. So right now, I am leaning to the fact, into the, the wave structure that we are starting down with Minute Wave 1 and a Minute Wave 2 pullback. I'm not going to get into all the detail on here because I go into all the detail with my members over on the website. And by the way, let me just mention that. If you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a daily basis, uh, head on over to joehenches.net and check out the membership. Okay, so we talk about this every day. We go into this kind of a lot more detail than this. And so right now, I think we've got a wave one and a wave two pullback. But here's the caveat. If we continue to subdivide and push a little bit higher, which is totally possible, we've only retraced 57.2%. We're right in that zone. This is usually the target. But can a wave two push higher? Can it retrace even more? Absolutely. I could show you tons of examples where an intermediate wave two has retraced, uh, you know, 70%, 85%, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but right now, this is kind of the guideline as to where we're looking at in terms of the retracement. Now, why do I say we're on shaky ground? Let me look at, let me show you a couple of things. The first thing, let me pull up the SPY, okay? And I need to get this adjusted. Okay, here we go. So here's that same picture, the counter trend move. This is, this line right here is a 10 day moving average of the volume on the SPY. So you can see, yeah, the first part of this, you're going to have a little bit of the, the, the effect of the high volume in the decline, okay? But when you look at from right in here, you know, after this B wave pullback, and take a look at this move right in here, we're still dropping off. We're dropping off dramatically. So this move on the counter trend uh, move to high here is on, on declining volume. So to me, that is not a strong picture uh, of strength. You know, plus we're getting right into the zone where I'm expecting it to pull back. So let's take a look at one more thing related to that, the breadth of the market. So in here, what I did was I looked at, this is 
uh, where I keep all my data from the McClellan oscillator, which we're going to take a look at in just a minute. Here's the advancing and declining columns for the New York Stock Exchange. So here's March 24th. Here's March 24th. Okay, so this is the first day of the counter trend move. So now we're taking a look at the breadth. Advance versus decline. Very strong. 11.4 out of the chute. It's really blasting off. But you can see the average of the first three days is 7.58. So then you look and say, OK, well, now the next leg up starts here on April 2nd into the high of April 17th. So we look at from here right in through here. The average of, and I'm only looking at the up days, OK, because I'm only looking at the positive. I'm just trying to see the, the depth and the average of the, of the breadth. It averaged 5.3, so significantly lower than the, uh, the strength of the move that occurred right here. So we got a lack of strength and breadth. We're getting a lack of strength and volume. To me, that's telling me that the, that the rally is on shaky ground. All right, let's take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Now at this point, let me pull it out so we can see the whole picture in here. So, you know, with the, uh, the, the March, middle of March to the end of March, we got deeply oversold, extremely oversold. Then we bounced back and we got extremely overbought. Anything over 150 plus 150 is extremely overbought and, and below minus 150 is extremely oversold. So here we are on Friday. We closed at 124. Let's round it. So we're overbought on the situations. We came back down to neutral. Now we've bounced up a little bit. So we're overbought. The market's on, uh, on shaky ground based on breadth and volume. We're at a point where we've retraced what is a normal retracement measures. I think we need to be on very uh, high alert for this to continue to sell off, and I'll be looking for that to happen. Now, again, as I said, let me go back to the SPX. We're looking at Monday, you know, and uh, if we continue to push higher, take out the April 17th high, then you got to be looking for, to me, the next zone that you'd be looking for is up here at 28.93 to the 61.8 at 28 at 29.34. So 28.93 to 29.34 would be my next zone if we take out the April 17th high. OK, let's take a look at another indicator that we look at. The percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average. On the S&P 500, it closed at 38% on Friday. Now, the interesting thing is I keep the RSI on here also. And you can see that these little pushes have been happening in here and not really being confirmed and showing any strength on the RSI. So also a little suspect in terms of the move and what's happening. Uh, let's take a look at the XLF. OK, let me pull that up down here. And I want to go. OK, here's my what I call my moving average view. I want to look at this view. We're going to look at the weekly chart, and I'm going to go ahead and blow it out. So here's how it looks on the weekly view. You can see it was down 65 cents, closing at $21.74 on Friday. Uh, here's what I think is happening from an LA Wave per, uh, perspective. I think we had a, that big downdraft with the market. And then we've had this Wave 2 snapback. And now my expectation is this for to head down in Wave 3, which is what I just talked about on the S&P 500. Now, the bigger picture in here, I'm going to zoom out. You can see. Here's the bigger picture. Here's all the data I have on XLF. This is back to 1998. So here's the 2000 high. We barely got above it, just inched above it. And then we came down, came down hard and broke this trend line, OK, that basically contained the entire uh, impulsive move uh, that XLF made. I find it really, really interesting that with all of the stimulus, all of the QE1, QE2, 3, 4, whatever, and 0% interest, you know, getting down to 0% interest rate, all of that, the financials could barely just get back to the high that was occurred in 2007. And now we're in breakdown mode. So we'll see where we had uh, at this point. But right now, we just need to see this start to, or the expectation is this for, to turn back down. All right, that's it for 
this weekend. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber on the channel, hit that little bell and subscribe to it. And again, if you'd like to have more of this kind of information, head over to joehenches.net, check out the membership and become an insider member. Everyone have a great weekend and a great week and be safe. We'll talk to you on the next video.